gentlemen, I'm going to have a word with you about Turkey. Turkey is in the news, big news, because there's been a big earthquake there, you know. 7.8 on the Richter scale, that's a very big one. And it hit central and southern Turkey and spilled over into north and eastern Syria. And the damage has been tremendous. As per conservative estimates, I think 50,000 people have died. Maybe more, maybe less, but let's say thousands have died. But there's no doubt that cities and villages have been obliterated, smashed. Now, this is a very dangerous thing, you know, because Turkey was one of the countries which was in a resurgent mood. And President Erdogan was thinking that he should hold the mantle of the Ottoman Empire. Now, the Ottoman Empire, as you know, ruled off much of Eastern Europe, the Arab world, and Egypt and other places. And its heyday, it was a very big empire with a population of 100 million. Very big one in those days. And it lasted for 600 years till 1922. But one fact has to come out when the Ottomans were ruling. The people they ruled were not happy. That is the reason the Ottoman Empire collapsed. The Arabs were fighting them. And they fought them in the First World War. And you know about the famous Lawrence of Arabia, you know. And there's a wonderful movie, you know, with Peter O'Toole. As Lawrence and the Indian star I.S. Johar. He's got a role in the movie also. And then he led the revolt. And then the Eastern European countries also revolted. There was a Greek war of independence. Turk lost. They gave her everything. And then came the First World War. Turkey tied up with the Central Powers. And that is where they committed something which for which they cannot be forgiven. They committed genocide. One million at a conservative ethnic Christians who were Armenians were killed. And what the Turks did? They caught one or two colonels and tried them and that's the end of it. Even the American Senate and the Vatican have termed this as a massacre. Now, why am I talking of the massacre and the, and the earthquake? Is there a link between the two? The link is there because something is called the laws of nature, which I believe in, and the fact that nature, or when you call it Gorenthi, is a great leveler. Turkey was aspiring once again to become like the Ottoman Empire, maybe, you know, rekindle the old image when Suleiman the Magnificent ruled from Istanbul, but that's not going to happen now. The Arab world was scared, the Arabs were scared, because Turkey wanted to take over the leadership of the Muslim Sunni world. <coughs> and it wanted to displace Saudi Arabia, which is the custodian of the Muslim holy places. The king of Saudi Arabia is the custodian, and Turkey wanted to replace Arabia, Saudi Arabia, as the leader of the Muslim world. And they found it likely a lie at that time. Erdogan found one was Pakistan, the other was Malaysia. Uh, Imran Khan was the man who had the meeting with uh, Erdogan when they discussed this thing, including Dr. Mahathir, you know, the Prime Minister of uh, Malaysia. And they even talked of a channel to rival the BBC, something similar with an Islamic channel and all that. And this was not liked by the Saudis, and they went into action. But it, uh, Turkey still had the dream, as the dream of an Ottoman Empire coming back. But now, as I said, God is a great level, and this particular earthquake is going to be the end of that dream. And Erdogan has to realize that he just can't go around bashing things up. Turkey, which for years had been neutral in the conflict between India and Pakistan and Kashmir, began to mouth words like, India is an aggressor, India is suppressing the Muslims in Kashmir, and Erdogan went and even took up the case in the United Nations. He spoke there on these issues. And I, frankly, couldn't understand what was his motive. Basically, he was thinking, I'll galvanize the Muslim support by talking about Kashmir and Palestine and say both are together. 
He was also very aggressive against Israel. But all this has come to zero. Turkey's GDP is going to go down. The industry is ravished. They've lost hundreds of thousands of people killed. The infrastructure is destroyed. And Turkey is going to find a way to be able to come back, come back. Because they have to take up reconstruction now of their country, not go around thinking that they reinvent the Ottoman Empire. As a hindsight, I feel Erdogan has outlived his utility, frankly, and it's about time he went home. There's another election coming up, but it's very possible that he'll win that election by hook or crook and then continue. But that'll be bad for Turkey. Turkey is a very important nation in Central Asia and has been a ally of the Americans for a long time, but now Turkey, but now Erdogan has been playing a double game. He's been courting the Russians. And he's a NATO ally. And despite being a NATO ally, he even got the S-400 missile system from Russia. And he has good relations with Putin. And he was trying to act as a mediator between Russia and Ukraine. All that is okay. But probably he was trying to show that he's a very big power. And he was almost on the way to that because he took part in the conflict uh, by proxy in the conflict between Azerbaijan and Armenia, because Armenia, they, they don't like Armenia at all, because the Christian nation is Azerbaijan Muslim. And they gave them drones and all, and you know what happened? The Armenians were not able to stand up against the drones, and they had to give away a lot of area back to Azerbaijan. So Turkey was on the ascendant, but that ascendance is gone. And their uh, biggest ally, Pakistan, is in doldrums. I won't be sure it's going, to, it's going to last in its present form. It may break up into three states or something like that. There's no food to eat. And Turkey doesn't have any money or anything to come and help Pakistan. Okay, we give you some money or something like that. No, the country is in dire straits. And you can examine how dire straits they are. Because even uh, the Chinese have closed their consulate division in the Islamabad embassy and they have advised, sent out an advisory to the citizens not to visit Pakistan because of the disturbed conditions. Don't forget that many Chinese have been killed in uh, Pakistan. Three of the teachers were shot, killed in uh, Karachi and in Quetta. So then, gentlemen, uh, we must bear in mind, Harold Robbins wrote that famous book, Dreams die first. I think Erdogan's dreams have died. I hope they have because once he sobers up now and realizes that just going around uh, poking his nose at various places, you know, is not the best of things. And he must be having second thoughts because despite all his attacks on India and Kashmir, I think he should say thank you to the benevolence of the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi, who positioned units of the Indian Army there to set up field hospitals and look after the quick victims. It's a great feat, and the Turks have realized. And the Turkish ambassador has said, India Hamara Dost hai. that is, we are our friend. So, gentlemen, all I can say is there is the wrath of God which has caught Turkey. And I'm an amateur astrologer. I'm going to make another forecast here. And that forecast is, I find there are omens, there are portents, that there could be another massive earthquake in Turkey. God forbid that happens. But if it happens, Turkey is going to be completely devastated. I hope it doesn't happen. Why? Because I love Turkey. I mean, to Istanbul. It's like any European city. Wonderful place. And such beautiful... Turkish woman moving around in short skirts. Wonderful place, I said. And it'll be a sad thing if they have to suffer all these things. But sadder still, <laughs> Mr. Erdogan is not removed. You need a man who's more pragmatic, someone like Kemal Ataturk, the great, who took Turkey forward. Gentlemen, the earthquake is a reality. I'm not going to run away from anybody. I'll close again once more, gentlemen, and say, God bless and Jai Hind. Look after yourself 
and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget it. And share it with your friends. Bye-bye. God bless.